Hello and welcome to the NPTEL MOOCs course on design and implementation of human computer interfaces. Lecture number 23 where we will discuss about a case study on creating a design document based on object oriented design approach using UML. In the previous lectures, we have learned about the object oriented design approach. We have also gone through the basic concepts of creating a design using the object oriented design approach and representing the design using a language which is UML or unified modeling language. In this lecture, we are going to see a document that is created using UML for a particular system. So, the objective of this lecture is to demonstrate how to create a design document where we are using object oriented approach and representing the design using the language UML. This is about developing a game for learning. So, the name of the system is game based learning. So, this is the cover page of the design document. This is a software design document with a creation date mentioned. So, ideally the date should be mentioned when the document is created and the creators that is created by the name of the designers who have created this design document. The date need not be a single date instead here it can be a history of first creation then uh, revision then uh, refinement and final document creation date. So, this whole historical phases can be recorded or the first creation date can be recorded. Ideally the historical evolution should be recorded in the form of different dates. The cover page is followed by a table of content where different sections that are present in the document are mentioned as shown here. Introduction, glossary of terms, use cases, class diagrams, interaction diagram in the form of a sequence diagram and optionally flowchart for the system. In the introduction, if you may recollect earlier also we have seen one case study on SRS document. Similarly, here in the introduction, it is desirable that we keep these sections. General introduction, this software design document is a document to provide documentation which will be used to aid in software development by providing the details for how the software should be built. And some general statements are written within this design document there are narrative and graphical documentation of the software design for the project including use case models, sequence diagram, class diagram and other supporting requirement information. This is followed by purpose statements. What is the purpose? The purpose of the document is to provide a description of the design of a system fully enough to allow for software development to proceed with an understanding of what is to be built and how it is expected to be built. This document provides information about touch based user interface which will guide student to learn different sorting algorithms. So, this is the objective for this particular system that is mentioned under this purpose section. This document is intended for both the developers and students of the or rather users of the system. Scope of project another important section ideally should be there in the design document. This software system will be a virtual game based learning system intended for students wanting to learn different sorting algorithms. This system will help students learn while playing using touch based mobile interface. A teacher also can use this application as a supplementary for teaching sorting algorithms. So, the introduction section contains the basic objective as well as intended users for the system. Some references can optionally be mentioned, ideally it should be there like tools that are used for creating the diagrams, 
other sources that are used to create the document. These things can be listed under the reference section as shown here. And there can be an overview of the document. The document is divided into 11 sections with various subsection. The major sections are introduction, glossary, use cases, class diagrams and sequence diagrams. This is an overview of the whole document which can be there in the introduction section. The next section is the glossary, glossary of terms that are used in the subsequent document. For example, in this document there are 5 important terms that are used, cube which is a 3D object with number engraved on it, cube array list of 3D objects with numbers engraved on each of these objects, bucket 3D object which can hold numbers on it, bucket array list of buckets or 3D objects which can hold numbers and main menu which is the screen containing these options play game, manage setting, show leaderboard and exit games. So, what each of these mean will be clear in subsequent part of the document. Then comes the main portion of the document namely use cases. Remember that in object oriented design, we focus on objects and while representing the design, there are three major views that we discussed, the use case view, the behavioral view and the structural view. The use case view relies on use cases. So, for this particular application that is game based learning, let us see what are the use cases mentioned in the document. Actors are player. Now, who is a player? A student is a user or player who wants to learn different sorting algorithms using touch based mobile interface. So, this is how a player is explained in the design document itself. Now, remember that here we are just mentioning student, but the same system can be used by teachers as well. So, teacher can be another player. However, in this particular design document, we will not cover the design aspects for teacher. We will focus only on student as users. So, if that is the case, that is students are the users. So, what are the use cases for a student? Play games, there are four use cases mentioned. One is play games then show leaderboard, manage settings and exit game. The use cases are listed, now we have to create the use case diagram. If you recollect there are several components in the diagram namely the stick figure which represents the actor, the ellipsis, ellipses which represent the use cases, the system boundary and the lines. So, this four use cases are captured in this diagram, use case diagram. Here is the actor represented with the stick figure, then these are the ellipses. There are four such ellipses, play game, manage setting, show leaderboard and exit game. Note that there need not be any order in which these four are placed. It can be of any order because this placement does not indicate any ordering between the different use cases. Now, these four use cases are enclosed within this rectangle which represents the whole system for a student user. Next thing is for each use case we are supposed to come up with the main line sequence and if required alternative sequence. Let us start with the first use case that is play game. Now, in this use case using this use case the player can start playing the game. So, that is the use case. So, for this the main line sequence how it looks like according to the design proposed. One thing we have to keep in mind is that 
this sequence may be different depending on the designer. So, whatever the designer feels that is captured within this sequence, it need not be unique. So, designer 1 can have one mainline sequence whereas, designer 2 can come up with a different mainline sequence. So, here in the mainline sequence according to this particular design, there are several steps. First player or the actor selects the play game option, then the system displays prompt for the player to input name and age. Then the player enters the name and age. Then the system displays a message that player profile created successfully and a prompt to choose among the four sorting algorithms insertion sort, selection sort, bubble sort and radix sort. So, in this game there are these four algorithms, sorting algorithms using which a player can learn different sorting algorithms. After that the player selects one of the four algorithms, then system displays the pseudo code of the selection algorithm with a start option to decide when to start playing the game. Next player learns the pseudo code of the algorithm and press or select start button when ready to play the game. Then the system then the system starts the game by generating and displaying a random set of numbers placed on 3D cubes and setting of the timer. So, there is one timer which is set off at this point. Player then start playing the game by making the moves, swap two cubes, put a cube or a set of cubes in a bucket and pick them up back from the bucket as is necessary for the relevant sorting algorithm. System then moves the cubes as dictated by the player with a submit button to evaluate the player's current configuration of the array of numbers when the player finishes making the moves. Player then selects the submit button when done with making the necessary moves for a particular iteration. System then evaluates the submitted configuration of that particular iteration and award points based on the following criteria that is if the submitted configuration is correct, award the player plus 10 points, if the configuration is incorrect deduct 10 points from the player score and show the player the correct sequence while also setting the next configuration of the array to the correct sequence. Then player keeps making the moves until the array is sorted as per the player's understanding and submit the final configuration of the array. Next the system evaluates the final configuration and awards points using the same criteria as that applied to any other move and display end of game. Also calculates the player's final score, displays it and enters it into the leaderboard if the score is among the current top 5 scores then displays a prompt to allow the player to choose between the following options. New game to start a new game, main menu to return to the main menu. Player then selects one of the two options displayed, system then does the following. If the player selects the new game option then return to step 10, if player selects the main menu option return to step 0 or at the beginning of this sequence that is the mainline sequence as per this particular design document. Now, there are some alternative sequence mentioned as well. At step 4 of mainline sequence, the system displays message user already exists if there exists a user with the input name and then display a prompt to choose among the four sorting algorithms. In another scenario at step 4 of mainline sequence, the system displays the message that some input information has not been entered. The system then displays a prompt to enter the missing value. Another scenario is at step 13 of mainline sequence here, the player selects restart option to restart the current game and the system restarts the game with the same initial configuration as that of the current game and move to step 11 of the mainline sequence. Another alternative sequence at the same step, step 13 can be 
the player selects the main menu option to end the current game and return to the main menu. Then in that case system ends the current game and return to the main menu without calculating player scores. Again at step 13 another alternative sequence can be player selects the exit option and the system ends the current game and exits the application without calculating player score. Then at step 14 of the mainline sequence there can be some alternative sequence. The system displays time up when the timer has reached to 0. Though the final array configuration may not have been reached at that point, then computes the player's final scores based on the moves he made before the timer reached 0 and display it. Then displays a prompt to allow the player to choose between following options new game or main menu. So, these are some of the alternative sequences that are mentioned for different steps. The next use case is manage settings. In this use case the player can manage the game environment variables such as game music, game sounds and see a how to play tutorial. Here the mainline sequence is designed as follows. First player selects setting option, system then displays a sub menu containing sound, music, how to play and main menu options. Player then selects one of the four options, system then uh, does the appropriate task depending on the option selected. If sound is selected then displays a slider bar to increase decrease sound. If music is selected then displays a slider bar to increase decrease music. If how to play is selected opens an interactive session where the player is instructed to make moves as in a normal game. And if main menu is selected returns the player to the main menu. The third use case is show leaderboard. Here the player can see the leaderboard displaying the top 5 scores of the players. Here there is only one mainline sequence that is player selects the leaderboard option and system displays the leaderboard which is nothing but a table containing top 5 scores among all games played along with the name of the player besides each score. A single player's name can appear more than once in the leaderboard. Player then selects main menu option and system returns the player to the main menu. So, there is no alternative sequence. And finally, exit game. So, using this the player can exit from the game. Here there is a mainline sequence which says that player selects exit game option, system then asks user if user is sure to exit the application. So, there is some confirmatory dialogue. Player selects yes option and system moves the user out from the application. Now, there can be an alternative sequence at step 3 that means here player select no option and system stays in the main menu. These are the four use cases with mainline and alternative sequences. Our next task is to create a behavioral view for these use cases. In the behavioral view we have to identify the objects and create interaction diagram for the objects. Now that behavioral view will come later before that let us see the structural view with the classes and the relationship between the classes. This figure shows the structural view. Now, these are the classes evaluator, leaderboard, game, user, cube, bucket, sorting, environment, selection, bubble, radix, insertion sort. These are the class names given. Now, here we are not trying to figure out whether the class names or the classes or the number of classes are optimum, perfect, good, anything. So, this is just a case study on design of the classes and design of the class diagram which is the structural view of the system design. So, these classes are connected with arrows, arrows indicate the kind of relationship association or aggregation or similar such relationships as we have discussed in the previous lecture. As you can see different types of notations are used. The field 
symbols unfilled symbols here simple arrows to indicate the type of relationship along with the numerical values indicating the details of the relationships as discussed in the earlier lectures. So, along with this diagram we also need to show in detail the classes their details namely in terms of their attributes and member functions that is done separately because in this diagram everything cannot be shown as that will create a very complex diagram. So, the class definitions are added separately in the document. For example, the game class shown here. So, for this game this is the details having attributes there are 5 attributes or data values and there are 7 member functions. So, the data members are player, score, created at, sorting and duration whereas, methods are get player, set player, get score, set score, set duration, get sorting type and set sorting type. For each method some more details are given like say for example, get player whether it takes any argument, no argument, return value returns an object of the user class, description, get player method is used to obtain the entire details of the user which are associated to the object of the game class, called by method is called by the main program or activity. It calls get name and get age methods of the user class. So, all these details are mentioned separately for game class. Also in the actual definition you can see the type of data that can be there in the attributes. So, player is user type data, score is integer type data, created at time data, sorting data, duration another time data. Similarly, for this class other member functions are described in details in terms of parameters, return value, description, called by and calls which are the function that it calls. So, for all such all functions or all member functions those details are provided. So, there are 7 member functions. So, seven such set of details are provided. Next is leaderboard class. It has one attribute games played top score and it has three member functions set new entry, get top 10 scores and clear history. Like before for each method or member function the details are provided for example, set new entry function parameters objects of game class game which have just ended return value null or void description this method will first check whether the score of the game played is among the top 10 if available score if yes then it will store the game in the top 10 score games data member if less than 10 games are available then the check will be made among all the available games in the top 10 score games array. In case of tie priority will be given to the game class object which was created before. So, this summarizes the things that this member function does. It is called by the destructor of the game class and it calls other functions such as get sorting type, get player, get score method of the game class. So, the dependencies are clearly specified under the description. Similarly, for other member functions of the 
class. Similar descriptions are provided for all the other classes, cube class having 3 attributes and 6 member functions, bucket class having 2 attributes and 4 member functions, evaluator having 2 attributes and 1 member function, sorting having 1 attribute and 2 member functions, user class having 2 attributes and 4 member functions, environment having 2 attributes and 4 member functions, bubble sort having 2 member functions only no attribute, insertion sort having 1 attribute and 4 member functions. Selection sort having two member functions, no attributes. Radix sort having one attribute and three member functions. So, that gives us a structural view of the system in terms of classes and their relationships with detailed description for each of the classes, including description of the attributes and description of the member functions. As you can see, this is how we can give the details. There can be one diagram only mentioning the names of the classes and their relationship and separate entries for details for each class. And in the details, we have to keep give details of the attributes as well as member functions. For member functions, we have to give detailed information regarding its input, output, dependencies and the algorithm or what it does exactly in the form of description. The next thing that we should do is we should create a behavioral diagram that means how the objects that are instantiation of these classes behave while the system is being executed that we can do in terms of sequence diagram which we have learned earlier. So, here what we can do is create sequence diagram for each use cases in terms of objects. On top we have mentioned the object names as you can see here. So, there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 objects for this use case as identified by the designer. Again, these are not unique diagrams. So, for the same use case, a different designer or a team of designers can choose different sets of objects and accordingly can come up with a different sequence diagram. So, there is nothing unique about these diagrams. For each object, the lifespan is shown by the length of the bar that represents the object. For example, the first object has the maximum lifespan, then the second object gets created and destroyed periodically as shown with these individual bars. That is true again for the third object up to this point. The fourth object again optionally gets created and periodically gets created and destroyed, three such occurrences are there. For fifth object, there are two such occurrences, sixth object gets created and destroyed within this range as shown with this bar and the seventh object is the one with least lifespan gets created once and destroyed as indicated by this particular bar with its particular position. And the arrows indicate the interaction between the objects when they are alive with the direction indicating the direction of message passing. So, this is for play game. For show leaderboard use case, this is the sequence diagram. There are three objects. The first object has the maximum lifespan followed by the second object followed by the third object. For use case manage setting, again there are three objects. 
first object with maximum lifespan followed by the second object which is followed by the third object. Note that here the objects are created based on the domain model. So, we have boundary objects, entity objects and controller objects. And finally, we have the exit game use case for which there are four objects. First one is having the maximum lifespan, then the second one followed by the third object and the fourth object is having the least lifespan. So, what these diagrams indicate is that when this particular use case is being executed that means when suppose the user is exiting the game or the user is playing the game then the particular objects belonging to the appropriate classes those get created destroyed as per the diagram and those interact with each other as per the sequence diagram or as specified in the sequence diagram. So, these diagrams indicate how the objects that are result of instantiation of the classes which we have seen in the structural diagram, how these objects behave while a particular use case is being executed. While we are learning the concepts of UML and the different views and the diagrams, we mentioned that a right way to do is to first identify the use cases. For each use cases, create this behavioral diagram and get the list of objects and then merge them together to come to the structural diagram. However, in this design document as you can see that sequence is not followed. Instead, first the use cases are identified, then structural view is created and then the behavioral view is created. This is also all right. It is not that only that first approach should be followed. However, it sometimes helps if we first identify the objects and from there generalize the classes. But it is up to the designer which path to follow whether first use case then structural followed by behavioral diagrams or first use case diagrams followed by behavioral diagrams and from there come to the structural diagram. Both are all right. So, that is in a nutshell what should be part of the design document when we are creating a design based on the object oriented design approach and representing it using UML. So, we have to include the use cases with use case diagram, mainline sequence and alternative sequence for each use case. Then we have to include the objects and their behavior during runtime that is the behavioral diagram. We have also to include the structural diagram that is what are the classes and how they are connected to each other, how they are related to each other. The particular sequence in which you are going to include these information in the document is up to you, up to the designer that is you can first have the use cases followed by structural diagram or the class diagram followed by behavioral diagram or you can have the use case followed by behavioral diagram followed by structural diagram, either is fine. Optionally at the end of the document for the better understanding of the data flow in the system, you can also include a flow chart as shown here, although it is optional and not mandatory. So, that is how we can conceptualize and create a design document following object oriented design approach. Earlier we have seen how to create a design document following the functional approach where we use TFD and entity relationship diagram. In this case study we have seen how to create a design document where we use object oriented design and UML as a language to express the design. I hope you enjoyed this lecture and learned how to create such a document. 
looking forward to meet you in the next lecture. Thank you and goodbye. Thank you.